Hi folks, I'm Hector Garcia. I'm a CPA, and throughout my career, I have worn many hats. I've been a bookkeeper, I've been a tax preparer, I've been a software consultant specializing on QuickBooks, and now I have evolved my practice to a higher level advisory services. Advisory services is when people pay me for my brain, for my knowledge, for my experience, and not for the work I can do with my hands. Now, I do have a practice with multiple types of people working on it, and many, many services requires a mixture of data entry folks, uh, financial statement preparation, accounting type of folks, and people like me that are gonna be focused on helping their clients grow and make better decisions. If you're an accountant or a bookkeeper yourself, you might wanna stick around because I wanna give you what I believe are three keys to success for me and my practice. These are three things that I have implemented myself and I believe wholeheartedly that most accountants and bookkeepers can implement pretty easily just by understanding them, practicing them, and bringing them to life. So number one is positioning. Positioning means you specialize. You pick a niche or a target market. You repeat over and over and over one thing and you become a master of your, of your craft you become best in class. And the reason why that's so important, although it might sound boring, is because you're going to get better, more efficient, and more effective at that specific type of work. So when you attract clients of that specific type, you're going to get much faster and much more keen at identifying the key problem and suggesting solutions because you've done it before, you've seen it before. On top of that, you're going to learn how to communicate that specialty. You communicate that specialty in many ways. Your logo, the colors you wear, the name of your business, the, the way your website looks, your slogan, your unique positioning statement. The unique positioning statement is when you meet somebody in Starbucks or whatever and they ask you, hey, what do you do for a living? And if you answer, I'm an accountant or I'm a bookkeeper, that's probably a really bad answer because the customer is going to make their own conclusions to what that means. What you want to have is a specific statement that basically tells everything that you do and why the customer should be interested on working with you. For example, sometimes I'll say something like, I help my small business clients take more vacations. That's it. When people ask me, what do you do? That's what I do. And then when they ask me, what does that mean? What do you mean you help your small business clients take more vacations? Then I can get into the details like, well, I specialize with working with small and growing manufacturers that use QuickBooks. I help them get their inventory straighten up. And then maybe they want to ask one step further and say, what does that got to do with vacations? Then you can get into the deep crux of how you understand your business because you're a specialist. I can say things like, well, when I help my clients get their inventory in order, they can rely on the inventory they have in stock. All their salespeople can promise delivery dates correctly. The owner of the business can stop dealing with the minutiae detail of the bookkeeping, the accounting, and the inventory counts, and they can focus on helping their salespeople uh, bring new business and developing new channels to sell their product. And through that, they become more profitable, they attract more clients, and they'll be able to take more vacations without having to worry that if they leave, the owner of the company leaves the business for a couple of weeks, everything will go down in shambles, right? So that's really what a unique positioning statement is, is be able to have an effective way to communicate what you do with passion, with clarity, and maintaining the interest of people. You never want to go out there and shout that you're an accountant or bookkeeper. Customers come to me because you're not going to be differentiated. So positioning, it's about understanding what you're good at and building an entire persona, an entire brand around that so customers come to you and you don't have to chase them. The second key to success for me has been understanding value pricing. But to, in order to understand value pricing, you got to take a step back and you have to understand how to have a value conversation with your clients. The value conversation is this long form conversation. It's 45 minutes, sometimes two hours, where you get really, really deep into what the customer wants at the end. For example, the very first time I had a value conversation, and this really impacted me 
uh, really forever. And this, is, this has been really the, the, the seed that has been planted in my head. And the reason why, why I've been convinced this is so powerful is a client came to me and asked me, Hector, I need you to fix my inventory counts, right? And so that, that sounds like the type of request that I would get, especially since I'm, I'm a specialist in manufacturing and inventory. So when the client comes to me and says, I need you to fix my inventory, my my immediate reaction is, of course, I'm an accountant, I'm a specialist in this area, I gotta fix your inventory, let's do it. And if I don't understand the underlying reason or the value of my work, I will be tempted to charge by the hour or charge by the project without truly understanding the impact I can have on the business. So instead of answering something like, sure, I will uh, fix your inventory, I would ask something like, why? Why is it important that I fix your inventory? I'm just trying to understand uh, why you think this is a top priority. Out of all the things you could possibly do, or I could possibly do for you, why should I focus on fixing your inventory first? And then your client might come back to you and a answer something like, well, if the inventory is not accurate, uh, I don't get the right uh, gross margins. And uh, if I don't have the right gross margins, I can't, I can't rely on my financial statements. And then I, I might just hear that and say that sounds like the right answer and I can just say sure you're right let's go ahead and fix the inventory so you get the correct gross margins but then instead of doing that I'll ask one more why I'll go deeper one more time and ask you know what what would be the value of understanding your gross margins or having accurate gross margins why does that matter and then your client might come to you well because without the gross margins I cannot pay accurate commissions and again, that sounds like the right answer, right? You got to get your accurate commissions to your employees. Let's go ahead and jump right into fixing the inventory. But learning the value conversation is slowing it down even more. Even when it sounds like you have the right answer, you don't have it quite there. So I want to ask one more time, you know, why is it important that you have accurate commissions? And then your client might come to you and says, wait, quite frankly, we lost our top employee last month because we've been fighting for months about getting the commission checks uh, right on time. And we also have discrepancies of what um, of uh, what the commission is supposed to be versus what the salesperson thinks it is, et cetera. So now you're getting to the, you know, the real crux of the issue, the real bottom of the problem, which is they lost an employee because we're having issues with, you know, understanding where the commissions were. And again, I, I you want to ask why one more time, go, go one more step deeper and say, look, what, what kind of financial impact does losing your top employee have for you? And then your client might come to you, well, my top employee used to bring $100,000 to the bottom line and to be able to get another employee ramped up to that level, it might take me a year or two or I might have to hire a salesperson from the competition at double the price to be able to to get that and or I have the risk that my top salesperson now might be hired by my competitors and they might take our clients with us. So now we understand that there's a numerical dollar value to the problem that we want to solve, $100,000 to the bottom line. So now all of a sudden fixing the inventory, let's say for example, I charge 5,000 or 10,000. That seems like a super cheap deal, right? I mean, it's, it's just such a great deal to solve a $100,000 problem with five or ten thousand dollars, but that's the that's the purpose of understanding value and understanding how pricing plays into that. If we don't understand that and we don't have any context to what our work is worth, the only context we might have is the time or the inputs that we put, which mires us into thinking about charging by the hour or charging based on time or charging piecemeal based on the project. So that's pricing and that's an incredibly important, probably the most important to the bottom line of my business to understand. And the third uh, key to success for me has been uh, productizing my services. So a productized service is when you take the most common service that you offer or the most common service that you perform that you could essentially think that it's very difficult to package into a product because there's so many variables. For example, cleaning up the books or preparing a tax return, that sort of thing, because every customer is different, every situation is different, you might uh, worry about having a productized service because you want to have this custom product and custom price or wait to figure out how long it takes you 
to price it. So a productized service is when you build a foot in the door product, whatever it is, eight ninety nine. You put a price to it. You give the, the the service itself a price, and you create restrictions or guidelines to what's included with that service. But it's also the most common thing that people ask for. When you build a product like that, it's easy, really easy for you to give prices up front to brand new prospects when they ask you how much does it, uh, how much do you charge, or how much does it cost to work with you or your firm. And instead of you saying, well, it depends, you can say, look, most people start with this one product. It's $8.99. It includes A, B, and C. It's not going to solve all your problems, but it's going to get us on track to understanding your business, getting your books cleaned up, whatever the service is. And then from that point, then we can talk about a fixed maintenance to keep that working or a monthly service or maybe some sort of custom value price project to transform your business in a very specific way. So the productized service allows me to take or deal with a high volume number of clients at the same time and be able to just give prices up front and be able to, well, first of all, get rid of tire kickers. So anyone that says, well, I can't afford whatever the price is, $5.99 to do that service. And that's the minimum thing that we have productized to get a foot in the door with our clients. Maybe that's good. Then I don't have to deal with that client anymore or that prospect rather and waste time. So a productized service is an incredible tool to, um, to give clients a frame of mind to understand what the experience might look like of working with you without having to have a really long sales conversation and value conversation, which in many ways, that's kind of the opposite of the value conversation. But I think that a part of my success has been leveraging both and knowing where to use one or the other. So those are my three keys to success. Hopefully you can use that your, on your own, on your business, and you can implement it. If you want to learn uh, in depth how that works, explaining all the steps and all the theories behind how that works. And also I'll give you some homework that you can do on your own and develop your own uh, strategy or your own plan around those three specific things, positioning, pricing, and productizing, you want to join my focused practice workshop. I'm going to put a link in the description uh, to that so you can see all about the pricing and the dates. And I hope to see you there. Hopefully, this was a valuable video. Whether I see you in the focused practice workshop or not, I would love to see more accountants and bookkeepers implement this so they can differentiate themselves, charge for what they're worth, and work more with the clients that they love to work doing the work that they doing the work that they love to do and remember it's not about uh, doing what you love it's about loving what you do and the only way to love what you do is to really kind of build that affinity for it and to build the affinity for it you have to get really good at it and you also need to feel that when you do it you're getting uh, paid for what it's worth in the long term you develop love for what you do rather than just stumble upon doing what you love, I think you're going to have a more successful practice and you will be a happier individual. Thank you very much and I'll see you on the next one.